it is time to start our daily webinars for the week. So this is our first webinar of the week, guys. Thank you for joining me today. It is Monday, October 8th, guys, and we have already got some profits locked in the bag, which is awesome. We also have a trade running in profit. So things are just looking real good, guys. I mean, this is just really what I've been talking about, right? We'll have our slow weeks. We'll have our times when there's not a ton of trades, and then there's going to be weeks like this, right? There's going to be these awesome weeks and like last week too and we've been in these running trades and you know everything's just just going swimmingly right now and that's the way this is why it's it's important that you guys practice and work on discipline with your patience and why i always 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 stress on mindset guys because um we always make our losses back that is the key so or even if it's just slow we always deliver it just takes some time just takes some some patience and getting the right setups and and whatnot so without further ado guys let's go ahead and get into things we'll come back to uj in a second let's just look at the economic calendar so really only gonna take like 10 seconds on this today was columbus day so happy columbus day to any of you guys that celebrated that uh banks were closed in the u.s and canada today and there is no news and tomorrow banks are open for all of the world however there is no high impact news so it's as simple as that no high impact news tomorrow so we are moving right on to the technicals so first things first is uj so i did make the decision i think i made, made the right decision to close this trade early so um uh, again, yeah, just to recap, if you guys are still in this trade, I would recommend closing it. Or I mean, I, I told you guys to close it. If you are, we closed it and we booked just about 4% profit, which is really, really good. Um, and yeah, so I mean, that, that's great. So we actually booked, yeah, it was like 3.61% profit, which is really, really good for a quick intraday trade that we don't have to wait very long for. Um, or I guess intra week trade that we didn't have to wait very long for, you know, we can, if we outline this trade, you know, we pretty much took it right around the market open, um, had a little bit of drawdown for a little while, not, not too much drawdown. I don't even think we got halfway to our stop loss. Maybe at one point we got halfway to our stop loss, but found some nice resistance just as we have in the past in this zone and fell through, right? Um, and yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. We got a nice, um, take profit almost at our take profit. I ended up waking up like right around here, monitoring price action. I wasn't a big fan of this bullish engulfing candle, strong buying pressure. So we closed right there. Glad we closed. Cause obviously we can see it moved up. Now it probably is going to go end up, uh, hitting our take profit. But to be honest, guys, I'm actually interested in possibly re-entering this trade. And I'll let you guys know my target of where I still think that UJ could correct to. I think USD Jappy, this pair, could definitely go down to this 50% level. We have the 50 EMA right here. Um, it's our 50% retracement, and this is just a good target. Okay, we, a lot of times we see when we have these big moves and we have that nice, strong pull down, we usually see pretty fluid price action. And so if we look at price where it's at now, 113.06, going down to 112.16, that is 110 pips. So there's definitely room to still capitalize and, and get into the, another trade. Um, I'm gonna see how price uh, reacts for the, I'm gonna be up pretty late today, guys. I mean, yesterday, my sleep schedule is, is always crazy, guys, but I went to bed like maybe around like 11, 12 a.m. last night, woke up at like four or 5 a.m. and checked the trades and, um, uh, or, didn't check the trades was that's when we got into or actually yeah did check the trades what did we do we got into some i don't know anyway my, my sleep schedule has been so messed up i was up from like 5 a.m to 8 a.m fell asleep for another three hours so i do this for you guys i do this absolutely for you guys all right um but anyways what i'm just trying to say is I, i'm not ready to re-enter yet we're still in um asian session and Australian session right now in Australia is one in the afternoon. So we're going to be going into London eventually in a few hours here and then New York. And that's when we should see the liquidity and volatility pick up. Um, I, I'm still expecting like one more little push somewhere in this range uh, before dropping. Okay. So I'm not, enter I'm not interested in entering quite yet, but I am interested. And just to recap, guys, why, in case you missed yesterday's webinar, the main reason we shorted, okay, 
because I said this yesterday, you know, a lot of novice traders, they're going to just take this trend line right here and they're just going to take this trend line and they're going to drag it like this and they're going to be buying, right? This is a big no-no, guys. This is why it's very important that you're working on your skill every day because it's not always as simple as just, you know, pop in a few trend lines, wait for confirmation and take the trade. There is a lot of intuition and understanding price action and reading the market and being able to decipher, you know, between what to do and what not to do, right? Timing is everything. So I even said this yesterday, right? I said a lot of people are going to draw this trend line. They're going to see the support on the 50 EMA. They're going to see it going up because they're only looking at this. They're only looking right here. They aren't observing what happened right here. And that's the key thing, guys, is when you compare this, what happened to right here. I compared it a couple times, right? You see how we make our highs and then we continue moving higher. Whereas right here, we do break these highs right here and we do go higher, but immediately we fall lower. And we actually pointed out that head and shoulders pattern, right guys? I, I pointed out we had a little bit of a head and shoulders in this area. Oops, let me just redo that a little bit better. Boom, 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 boom. And so we saw that retest of that neckline, just like I, I told you guys yesterday, that ascending trend line, and then price breaking that and moving down, right? That's, I mean, it's, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. You just gotta, just gotta know what you're doing, guys. So that's, I mean, that's why I do these webinars to help you guys, you know, see, see these types of things. So hopefully your eyes can catch it if you want to do your own trading too. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and look at pound, uh, GBP, Swiss franc, pound, Swiss franc. Uh, we're still in this trade, right guys? This is a long-term swing trade. We're still in it. We're up some nice money. We're up about 3% on our accounts right now and things are going good. I mean, I'm not interested in really changing anything that we have. This trades at break even right now. I want to keep it at break even for right now until we break through this zone. Then I'll probably move our, our, uh, us into a little bit of profit. But for now I am just interested in, I'm um, just holding this trade and letting it go. Uh, USD CAD, I am interested in some possible shorts on USD CAD, guys, okay? Um, I actually mentioned yesterday, I mean, I'm like, I'm so spot on right now, guys. I don't mean to like toot my own horn, but like, guys, if this is, you know, there's sometimes when like you're, I guess you could call like hot, right? Like quote unquote hot when you're like able to, just everything's just aligning with your analysis because that's at the end of the day, at the end of the day, guys, there's a million different ways, a million different profitable strategies. And that's good for you guys because it's not like you, you know, if you're having trouble understanding my strategy or maybe it's not for you, then that's okay because there's millions of ways to trade, right? There's a thousand ways to skin a cat, right? That's an old saying. So, or a hundred ways to skin a cat, whatever. So it's the same, same, I mean, that, that applies to Forex, right? There's not necessarily one strategy that's, you know, the only strategy that's going to work. So basically what I'm saying is lately, I think price action in the markets have really um, aligned with my strategy to just provide us some really good, um, a really good trading environment. But uh, anyways, USD CAD, I did mention that um, even though I had this channel, right? Let me, let me, I, I said this specifically on Sunday's webinar, guys, very important that you watch Sunday's webinar if you didn't already. And I said that this is just kind of a template, right? This isn't like a for sure line in the sand. Like this is where the resistance is on USD CAD. No, this is just kind of like the general top area. I recognize we had a, a fake out in this zone, right? But then if, if I was to draw this, like in my head, this zone kind of goes like this. It goes like down and then it kind of like goes up a little bit. Kind of like that. I know it's weird. I know it doesn't really make sense to some of you guys, but I was, I said this yesterday. I said I was expecting USD CAD to go down, but first probably push up and break through. Kind of like we did right here, guys. Kind of like we did right there. Okay. So um, I am looking for a potential intraday trade uh, sell on USD CAD. I mean, it's nice at some highs right now. We're trending downwards. We're in a nice descending channel. So lots of confluence to the downside, right? And I know some of you guys are saying, well, David, there's that trend line right here. It's going to act as support. Remember, guys, that's not a trend line. It's not. It's just a template in my head. I know I'm kind of weird, guys, but I, that's just what works for me. Whatever, right? I'm not going to change my strategy just because I'm worried what someone else thinks, right? So. Um, yeah, USD cat, I think we're going to see some downside probably head on back towards this area. Okay. Um, that is pretty much, I mean, we'll, we'll look at a couple other things, guys. Euro GBP, not giving me a whole lot to work with right now. I am, I, I do like, I mean, what I mean 
to work with is I, I think it is going to go lower. I am a big fan that it went and retested the 61.8% retracement level and rejected. So that is definitely showing sellers. And I really would like to, I'll put it this way. Like I can say a bias, right? I can say, you know, with confidence that I believe Euro GBP will hit right here, but do I, do I have an amazing risk to reward? Maybe. I mean, let's, let's look at something guys. Let's actually, let's actually browse for a second and let's just see what this risk to reward would be, right? Pretty simple, right? Right above the 61.8% retracement level, right above today's highs, or actually that's yesterday's highs, I believe. And oh, let me change this. Is this the right time? Yeah, Phoenix. Okay. Um, 33. By the way, guys, I am in Scottsdale, Arizona right now. Um, if any of you guys are out here in the area and want to link up before I leave on Thursday, feel free to do so. Um, but this is what I mean, guys. And this is what I mean by risk to reward ratio, right? This is why I'm saying like I do feel with confidence that we are going to go down to this target, but I'm not able to get a good risk ratio on this, right? This risk ratio, we're risking 34 pips to make 52 pips. And in my book, my strategy, eh, you know, maybe once in a while it's okay to take a trade like this, but I, I don't, you know, I'm just not, it's in, in my opinion, it's not what I would consider like a high probability trade. Okay. Not, not good enough risk to reward for me. So, you know, you do you. Um, but that's my recommendation. Um, AUD USD and NZD USD, I think are going to keep moving lower. Um, gold, not interested in trading Euro USD, not even interested in trading USD Swiss franc, not interested in trading. I mean, if you guys, there's, there's 10 of you guys in here right now, if there's something you really, really want me to look at, throw it in the chat real quick. I'll, you know, take a quick look. Um, pound yen is pretty disgusting still just really consolidating um dollar oh yeah we just talked about dollar yen usd cad pound swiss franc lots of things um yeah i mean that's pretty much it rest of the markets i'm not too interested in euro gbp i'll put it this way guys if we do get i'll i'll, I'll say this on euro gbp here's what i'm looking for and here's what how i could get a trade okay if we do see a four hour candle maybe over the next couple you know eight to 12 hours or so, pull up again to this zone. And let me just draw it out, right? Let me just get nitty gritty with this, okay? Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, let's say we see price move up a little bit. And then let's say we see a blue candle, you know, maybe something like this, right? Goes back up closes down and then we get a candle that looks like this then at that point that might be able to change our risk to reward right okay if i put a short in here let's say we put a short like right after that but our stop loss just above the highs. You notice, you see how that, that decreases. Oop, oh, oh, I did not mean to do any of this, guys. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me line this back up again, right there. That does get us a risk ratio that we like, right? You notice that, okay? So you see over here, risk ratio 2.17, whereas the risk ratio for the previous trade, if we sold now, is, a, is like 1.45, or it's less than a two risk to reward. So in this case, we would be risking 28 pips, to make 61 pips, right? A similar risk to reward ratio like Euro USD, okay? So that would be appropriate because that we have a good risk ratio. Um, well, nobody put anything in the chat, so it seems like you guys are learning, you guys are good with everything, where we got some good trades to look at. I mean, is, is this stuff helpful, guys? Are you guys understanding this? Does, does what I specifically said, I wanna know, I want your guys' feedback in the chat real quick. Does this, whole idea, this whole concept of understanding what happened here versus here makes sense to you guys? Does that make sense why once you see this formation or once we saw this specific formation, we already kind of started to get into a bearish, bearish, you know, looking for bearish or selling setups on this pair? All right. I guess nobody wants to, okay, here we go in the chat. 
Makes sense when you point out. Awesome. Ever trade flat? Probably very clear. Reginald. Ever trade flat market? Um, Reginald. Reginald. I'm not sure what you mean by a flat market. I mean, if you mean if you're talking about the only thing I can think of what you mean by that is like when there's like really tight consolidation or something like that. Let me see. Sideways. No, I mean. I mean, yes. I mean, it depends, right? Like, I mean, it, it depends on, it, it just depends. But I mean, mo most of the time I'm not super interested in trading a ranging market. It just depends on how big the range is, right? If we're talking like a couple hundred pip range, then yeah, you know, we can trade that. But if we're talking about, you know, something like this down here where, you know, you have like a 20 pip small little range and you're trying to take these little five pip scalps, you know, up and down. No, I don't, I don't do that. I'm not a, I don't recommend doing that either. And yeah, not trending. Uh, GBP, JPY. Uh, oh, I see what you mean, Reginald. Okay, so yeah, this is a good example. So no, I would not. I would not be trading this. Like this is not my, my analysis on GJ is, and this is the reason why I have this resistance right here in this support marked off because my analysis, or this is just my bias, basically that. Once we break this support, then I'll be looking for sells. Or once we break this resistance, then I'm looking for buys. But while price is inside of here, it's just too choppy, too unpredictable. The risk to it's hard to get a good risk ratio, risk to reward ratio, you know, unless obviously you're buying at the top or, or, or sorry, selling at the top or buying at the bottom. But I much prefer to grab the big move, the big trending move. Uh, yeah, gold did have a nice range for a while. Same thing with gold, right? And it still is ranging, actually. Right, we throw it on the daily. It still is not broken, kind of this support area. It's still ranging. So, so euro, euro, you. I mean, sorry, uh, gold and pound yen both very, very similar right now, right? They do, they tend to have a very negative, very strong negative correlation to each other. Uh, hold on, we had a question. Do you think it's safe to continue shorting UJ? Yeah, um, Al, I'm not sure how, if you've been in here since the beginning, but I was mentioning I am expecting UJ to move towards the 50%, I'm, I, the 50% retracement level. So if you guys write this down in your trading journal right now, every single one of you guys, 112.16, USD, JPY, 112.16, next target. Okay. So, um, yes, I think it's, it, I'm definitely going to be looking for a re-entry. I mean, we're getting it right now. Look what happened in the past five minutes, guys. Like, and this is why I don't jump into things, right? And this is why I'm waiting for it. Look what's, look what happened. It just, just while we've been on this webinar, it's spiked up 20 pips. Okay. So I'm waiting for something like this. I'm waiting for like a little push, like up to here one more time and then boom. Okay. So... If you guys are trading manually, like if you're not connected to the trade copier and you're taking my signals, most likely, okay, I don't want to promise anything because I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but in a perfect world, if this happens somewhere around here this evening, you notice, you guys see the 50 EMA pulling down right here? You see this 50 EMA? We're probably going to go up to meet. By time this gets to up here, the 50 EMA is probably going to be right around here. And this is probably going to be our zone to short. So like right around 113.40. Okay, somewhere around there. Some of you guys might ask like, okay, well, why can I, can I just put a sell limit there? So it sells once we get price that area. You could, but I'd like to kind of see price action, kind of figure out what the candles are doing. So I know where to set my stop loss and I make sure I'm getting a good risk ratio, all that good stuff. Um, but um, what I'm saying is most likely in the next four to eight hours there will be a trade called on this pair a resell reselling it okay might happen sooner could happen in the next couple hours it just depends just depends on the, the volatility guys depends on the, the volatility okay no worries al i figured you came in late um and so yeah one twelve sixteen, guys i mean this is this is out of everything in the charts, obviously pound Swiss franc we're in right now, it's running. We aren't looking to like re-enter that trade or rebuy that trade at all. USD CAD, obviously we need a little bit of help from, we need to still wait for a little bit of confirmation. And Euro GBP, same thing. I just went in, in detail of what we need to see to get that good risk ratio. Um, I mean, and same thing with, with dollar yen, right? So, I mean, you could say dollar yen is like, I'm as confident with dollar yen as I am with Euro GBP, right? I think both pairs are gonna fall, but just getting that entry, right? Timing is 
everything, ladies and gentlemen. So that is going to do it for today's outlook or today's webinar. Um, I don't really want to drag it on too much. If any of you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, but you know, we're just, we're just chugging along guys. We are just working and working and working. So keep grinding guys, stay focused, stay patient. And I will see you guys tomorrow, probably the same time, nine or 10 PM Eastern time for a weekly outlook. And other than that guys, take care. Have a great night.